We're here at Google's campus in Mountain View to talk to the team behind the Nexus line of products. We're going to take a look at what goes into making these products and where the company goes from here. It's actually going to be a very exciting year for us because instead of having a single Nexus device, we actually have a family of Nexus devices. We worked with ASUS leading up to the summer to launch Nexus 7. Um, and now we're going to show you a device that we partnered with LG on and a device that we partnered with Samsung on. This is Nexus 4, which is our new flagship Nexus phone. So that's the official name? That is the official so name. So the leaks, the leaks have been right. Why am I even here? I don't know. Why are you here? <laughs> I'm here for you. Obviously, Android um, being really you know, a platform but also an ecosystem, it's all about partnerships. You know, that's how Google really gets our innovations out to users, is through partners. Uh, my name is Patrick Brady, and I run our Android partner engineering team. I'm actually super excited this Christmas because it's like, finally we have a Nexus portfolio that is worthy of the Nexus name. Do you feel that previous devices were not up to your standards in terms of build quality? I think the previous devices, the technology wasn't there, and we weren't able to push ourselves hard enough. But this year, the partners that we chose really brought amazing technology to the table, and they were willing to go, you know, the, what is it, the last mile, the ultimate mile, they extra, were able to, extra mile. the extra mile. Yeah. You know, when we build the Nexus devices, we really do form one team. So we have, you know, the Android engineering team building the next release of the Android platform, and at the same time, we have our hardware partners on site, actually downstairs in this building, working together, making sure that you know, we're building the best possible hardware for our next Nexus devices, and we have the best possible software experience on top of it. What we're doing in 4.2 is we're actually bringing the widget framework from the home screen to the lock screen, so that you can do things before you actually unlock your phone. If I scroll to the right, uh, from the edge of the screen here, I can go to my camera. Uh, if I scroll to the left, I have all my widgets here. I've got my inbox, I've got my, uh, my sound search widget here. So if I hear a song in a bar and I immediately want to know what it is, I don't have to unlock the device. Uh, I'm going to add a widget here. And let's say I'm going to put on calendar in my lock screen. Uh, and then obviously from any of these lock screens, if you want to get through, you can just swipe up, bring up um, the, uh, the actual unlock UI and then get in. And that's what, uh, one important new thing here on the notification shade is this icon on the top right that gets you into quick settings. So the screen just flips and gives you access to things that you need, you know, often like Wi-Fi, you know, Bluetooth configuration. And if you really, if you really want to get into it very, very quickly, uh, instead of swiping down on the notification shade and pressing that icon, you could just swipe down with two fingers. Google Now was one of the hero features of Jelly Bean uh, you know, back in June when we announced it. What we're doing is we're con you know, continuing, as we said, continually add new Google Now cards with new and more interesting things. Uh, so what Google Now is doing right now is when you receive an email that contains a delivery, you know, delivery details um, with a tracking number, uh, it takes that tracking number for you and puts it on a card that basically says, this package is shipped. If you want to track it, just tap here. And that'll take you directly to the website. Uh, of you know, whoever, whichever courier is being used. And so what, what we're doing in this new uh, version of Google Now, if you've received a confirmation email for your flight, Google Now uh, can, can pick up that information about the flight, uh, save it, and then when the right time, when the right time comes, uh, and the right time is the day of your flight, uh, it then shows you this card. Similarly, if you get a hotel confirmation email, Google Now will, will pick up those details for you and display them on the day of that reservation, so you've got the, the reservation details in hand. So Nexus 4, it's got Gorilla Glass 2 front and back. It's got 2D glass on the front, so it's got a little curve to it. The device is really just all about the glass. Are you worried about <laughs> break, these things breaking? Because, you know, glass has a tendency to break. So one of the things that we've done with this product is um, we've paid a lot of attention to how you hold it and how the center frame protects it. Um, so the, the center frame actually protects the glass when it's resting down here. Um, it also uh, comes up to the edge of the glass and surrounds it on the back side and it's carefully curved up there. Even though it looks like it's got a little chamfer on there, that chamfer edge is really nicely rounded so it fits really nicely in your hand. The previous Nexus phones, we curved the glass to 
fit the way that you talked on the phone. But this device is really much more focused about how you interact with the phone. So the curve happens on the edges, and that means that it's really well suited for all the types of interactions that you do with an Android device. All the swipe gestures, especially the swipes that come from the edges, just kind of naturally glide. In, in 4.2, we're adding another uh, method of typing, which we call gesture typing. So this is kind of like swipe. Whether it's you know, like swipe or, or, or not, I think is, is, is less interesting um, because we've actually spent a significant amount of time thinking about how this thing should work. We do real-time gesture recognition, so the recognizer is running at all times. You know, it's collecting every single uh, uh, data point from your fingers gliding on the keyboard and then recalculating and recalculating and recalculating. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we put what you think you're typing on this little square that shows up where your finger is. So at all points in time, you're looking where your finger is going and you're seeing what it's telling you. All right, so it's pretty unique. So Nexus 4 has an eight megapixel uh, rear-facing sensor, Sony BSI sensor, and we'll be supporting HDR, and we have some cool new uh, panorama modes that I think you guys will like. So here's a camera in Android 4.2. We, we took everything out of the shot. Like we, all these knobs and controls and things that we used to have, they're all gone. The picture right there, and I can swipe back into it. There's the shot. <laughs> Fantastic. That is great. Uh, you know, I can apply um, some filters to it right here. So I think you're going to look great in bleach. And it's our album cover. You know, <laughs> other things. And it's right there. So that's done. Um, that saves a duplicate, right? They'll be the original and the. The original right. will still be there. Yeah. Yep. Now, uh, the other thing that we did was we have these accelerated gestures in camera now. So if I want to, for example, change my flash setting, I can just hold and then swipe to turn it on. In this case, I just want to turn it off. And that'll, that'll locate anywhere, like if your thumb is up high or down low, it'll, it'll just find where your thumb yeah, is. Yeah, so I can do it down here, uh, I can do it up here. For, since ICS, yeah, so for about a year, since I screen stage, we've had panorama mode. But uh, we've wanted to do a lot more than that because we think a panorama still doesn't capture the entire scene. So we're borrowing from some of the technology that we built for Street View to build a completely new approach to taking these immersive photos, uh, and that's called Photosphere. What is full resolution here? It depends on how many um, images you've captured into your Photosphere, right. um, you know, but it could be tens of megapixels. Can we see, can we see those people over on the left? I mean, that's, that's pretty cool. It's pretty good, right? I mean, that's pretty crazy. And also terrifying. I would be worried about that, man. We look for the partners that we really see innovating in, in specific areas. And so we really liked what LG was doing with a couple different technologies, specifically around inductive charging, some of their display technologies, and just some of the devices we saw them bringing out looked like uh, great hardware platforms for us to really showcase the next version of Android. And this is our newest dock, our wireless dock. <laughs> the web OS fed uh, over here losing it. This is still a, a pre-production sample. Actually, all the devices I'm showing you are not the actual final, final hardware because that's how we roll around here. But this is our inductive charging dock. There's an inductive coil on the device and it works just like a charger. And some of the devices, our partners, you know, come and pitch to us. They want to work with us on Nexus devices. And we have lots of partners coming to us and, and proposing uh, new designs. We typically look at that and we have an idea on the hardware side. We have things we like, we have things we don't like about it, um, and we work with them to refine that. On Nexus 7, we really worked with ASUS to change kind of the grip and the radius of all the curves in the bezel so that it had a great feel in your hand. We did a similar kind of process back and forth with LG on the Nexus 4, as well as um, with Samsung on the Nexus 10. What is this? So this is Nexus 10, which is a 10 inch, super high resolution tablet. It's 8.9 millimeters, 603 grams, and curved to fit your hands. The Nexus 10 has a 2560 by 1600 screen. Early on, we, we said we have to have this screen, it's gorgeous. And we needed a chip that could power that. And the only one we found out there was the Exynos 5 5250 from Samsung. 
With Nexus 10, we set out to figure out, okay, well, how do we get something that is just as comfortable as uh, Nexus 7 was, um, but in this large size? And so that's why we focused on the details of how the product fits and feels in your hand. Um, it has kind of this camera body, gunmetal finish on it. This isn't a metalized back that's going to just slip out of your hand. This is something that you can really easily, comfortably hold one-handed at kind of an incredible angle because the back really grips your hand. It is actually kind of a nice finish. It's weird, but it's so you're you're saying this is this is plastic. This is just a single piece of plastic. It's a single yeah. piece. Yeah, but you're kind of touting that, which is yeah. usually people are like, we made it look less like plastic. But this is a this is a beautiful piece of plastic that is essential to making this device so light. You know, a 300 pixel per inch screen, you know, in the abstract, it's just a metric on sort of a tech specs sheet. But when you bring your Google Play content together with it, uh, what it means is I can open up the magazines reader and get a beautiful high def magazine experience with beautiful pictures, uh, you know, very crisp, clear text, all of that sort of stuff, uh, really kind of bringing together how play content uh, works in conjunction with uh, the hardware and the software. One of the amazing things about this screen is its resolution, it's basically print. The other way that we sort of have been trying to evolve Google Play is uh, thinking about discovery. Within the store now, there's a, a new feature we call the Music Explorer that allows you to look at similar artists of the genre across the store to get some you know, different ideas of bands maybe that you hadn't heard about that you would like to know about. When I was a, a kid, my father had this console radio in our living room, it was this gigantic piece of furniture, and it had this huge knob that you could spin and it would sort of whip across a dozen radio stations at once. And so uh, we thought, like, how can we bring that sort of more of an analog discovery experience uh, to the tablet? You don't want to make a big, like, analog-looking knob that you could <laughs> flip through? Uh, so were, there early, were there early designs that were... Like, we're not big... really about the brushed aluminum so much, yeah. Um, yeah. but, uh, you know, I think uh, it's actually kind of an interesting thing to, to bring, you know, uh, an Explorer that has a vibe that's pretty close to the Android aesthetic, right? I mean, I think we're actually, you know, trying to you know, come up with a, with a certain sort of feel to our UI and one that is uh, really, you know, informed by the cloud and not the sort of, uh, you know, literalness of a radio sitting on your desk, right? I feel like you guys have been promising, you know, tablet software for a couple of years now. Will you have the software? And can it be a more attractive price point than the $500, $600 tablets that are on the market doing the, essentially the same thing? Well, I don't think anybody is doing this. Nobody has a tablet this thin, nobody has a tablet that is this light, and nobody has a tablet at this resolution. And all that said, it's going to be very competitively priced. What about the apps? One of the reasons why we were happy with Nexus 7 coming out first is because we really wanted to excite the Android ecosystem about the possibility of tablets. Apps that are designed with a tablet in mind for Nexus 7 work great on this. So you can almost think of Nexus 7 as a bit of a bootstrap to the ecosystem. Part of the reason why you know, we've invested significantly in building what you're holding is exactly so that we have you know, more and more motivation to the developer community to do that. Like we, you know, we, are, we, don't, we don't go out and pay people to do stuff. Like we, we would never do that. That's not how Google Developer Relations works. Um, but you know, we are trying as hard as we can to develop this ecosystem. And you know, when there's a significant number or even a trend towards a significant number of tablets like this in the market, people will see it. Android without these Nexus devices would not be possible. And, and that story of you know, what used to be called lead devices, right, way back with the, the um, T-Mobile G1 with HTC, um, has evolved into more of a, a brand for end users, so that is Nexus. Um, and that's, I think, incredibly important to Android as a whole and the Android development effort. Um, ultimately, it is up to the ecosystem. We can only uh, go so far by ourselves.